Okay, ready? Center. Ready, Freddy. <laughs> Uh, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Fort Salem Witching Hour podcast. I am your host, Jesse, and with me, as always, is my awesome co-host, DJ. Hello, DJ. Hello, Jesse. How are you this afternoon? I am terrific. I'll tell you what, podcast fans, we are excited to welcome a very special guest into the virtual recording studio with us today. She is an incredible actress and singer. She plays one of our favorite characters on the show we all know and love. And from what I can tell, she is a terrific all-around human being. She is brilliant. <laughs> she is amazing. She is a queen. Honestly, folks, there are not enough superlatives to adequately capture our affection for her. She is the one, <laughs> the only, the divine Miss Taylor Hickson. Taylor, welcome to the show. Oh, bless your heart. You really hyped me up. I think people are going to be a little disappointed after this. Uh, if you knew our fan base, they would they'd probably be like, you forgot some adjectives, Jesse. You, 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 didn't, go, you didn't go far enough to sort of... Bless your heart. We love them. Uh, well, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today, Taylor. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, we're, it's actually kind of an early birthday gift because it's DJ's birthday tomorrow, and then it'll be my birthday <laughs> in two weeks. So this is a gift. This is the best gift you could have given us is your presence today. <laughs> Most Happy definitely. Birthday. So we got thank Virgo? You. We got Virgo power. Yeah. We got some Virgo wow, power on the show today. Hard <laughs> work there is. That's right. Love it. That's right. So, um, all right. Well, we've got a million questions to ask you. So we'll just sort of jump right in here. And, and our fans are just dying. We, it was hard to sort through all the questions that we wanted to ask you today. But mm -hmm. maybe we'll mm -hmm. go back to the beginning, your superhero <laughs> origin story on Motherland for <laughs> yeah. Salem. So can you tell me a little bit about the casting process you went through for Rael? Like, what about the role intrigued you? Uh, you know, how did that opportunity come on, you know, come onto your plate? And then what was the audition process like? Oh man, okay, this this is probably three and a half plus years ago when I was first introduced to the story concept and the audition landed in my inbox. Uh, so I did an audition for it, I think the very end of 2017, I wanna say. Um, and I didn't hear back from them for quite a few months. Um, and my mate, my agent and manager messaged me back and they said, hey, do you remember this guy? Like they're they've been looking worldwide for all of their cast. Like they've really got their branches out and and uh, they they like your tape. They finally came across your tape months later and they keep coming back to you and they, you know, they they want to call back. And I thought, oh, great. So I did a, a call back and then further they wanted a chemistry read. And my friend who was in the running for, I think actually Scylla, they wanted to read us in room in Vancouver. So I came, I'm from Kelowna, which is four hours east of Vancouver. So I drove down to Vancouver and I did the, we did some chemistry work, me and my friend in, in her place. And we showed up to the chemistry read. And from there, they were like, okay, now we want to meet you in LA. We're like, oh my God, like this is, just keeps going and going. It's like the Russian doll <laughs> syndrome. Um, so they flew us down to LA, which I was freaking out about. And um, I actually, during the casting process of the pilot, I met who's now my one of my best bestest friends in the entire world. Her name's Kelsey. So that was a beautiful, beautiful thing that came out of the casting process because it was very <laughs> grueling for all of us. We were we were so nervous because uh, you know they had us read our individual auditions on the first day. It was a two day process. And they had us put up in LA and then the second day they had us read with uh, the group and tested all our chemistry. So they were switching people in and out wow. and then, you know, they'd swap out a different tally and swap out a different rail and so on and so forth. Um, and while we were there, I was walking by Amalia and Demetria mm -hmm. and they were sitting and having lunch on the second day. And they said, we got our call. We're booked. And we were like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. And then we're like, ooh, we're really getting nervous now because we're not doing anything. <laughs> and we go home and it goes on for about two weeks. And that's never really a good sign mm -hmm. in our in our field of work. So then after about two weeks, they give me a call and they said, I'm sorry, Taylor, we're actually gonna keep looking at other options. I was like, you know what? It's okay. Oh man. Like, I try not to let myself get hyped up, but this was this was like a really long bout of tension going on. Like I had a lot of tension with this with this uh, this project, and I wanted it so badly. I connected mm -hmm. so badly, so I let myself beg for it, and I you know really disheartened. I was I was really heartbroken when they told me that, and uh, you know I was like I, I gotta get on, move move past, and. Uh, 
deal with my heartbreak. And the next day they called me and told me I got the role. So I'm not sure what kind of scare tactic <laughs> they were attempting to play, but uh, it definitely worked. And it, it made me extremely grateful to to have the the platform to play in 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 the form of Rael. So that's so incredible. I, I can't yeah. even conceive of another actress playing Rael. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you inhabit that character so well. Like it's like inconceivable to me. I'm like, who who is, are these other candidates? I can't I can't even. I can't even. Oh that, looks uh, so different. Like we all had completely different features. Mm. Oh, oh some, of the, some of the other people going out have really dark features. Mm -hmm. Um just really ambiguous. Like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was really all over the place. So I was like, I'm, I'm not sure what they have in mind. I'm sure each group, um, each component of the casting process had their picks. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where it, it landed. So I was, I was really unsure. You know, I wasn't truly confident walking into that room, <laughs> but, I, but I had a good shot. But um, bless that my life. So. That determination must have really spoken to them when you got that first call then. Has to be. Oh man, that that broke my heart. But I mean, I was like, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, worth the wait. Definitely. And uh, kind of speaking to sort of that timeline. I mean, you started the process in 2017. You started filming the pilot in 2018, which I believe you may have still been filming Deadly Class when I you was. were doing that. So <laughs> how? how has your perception of Rael changed since then? And how maybe has your growth as a person changed how you see? I know we're, we're hitting you with all the hard oh, questions yeah. today. <laughs> like <it's... laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. So we're talking like three and a half plus years of growth, you know, which is like, I've, I've gone through three different personalities since then. Um, so all jokes aside, I mean, I've, I've been more or less the same since I was four, but I've just had mm -hmm. in growth since and I, I hope to continue to do so but it, it's always a blessing in terms of, of an actor standpoint to be able to really challenge the the dimensions and have the time to work on pushing the boundaries of a character because you have you know you're shooting for like six months and that's, mm -hmm. that's unlike a feature film you it's it's sort of indefinite it keeps going on a feature film you just have this little clip this little moment of this person's story generally whereas in, in film and television, you're sort of thrown into this moment, key moment in their life, and you're following along the journey for a while, and you get to watch the development and growth of these of these people. So, a, as an actor, it's 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 truly a, a blessing to be able to pick this person's brain and grow in parallel to her. It's it's not something that I've been lucky to have before. I've uh, three times a, three times a charm, but uh, yeah, my my two other series before this, they only went. Uh, one season so you know I did have a little bit of time to play with them but the growth that um, I've had with Rael has just been exponential and I, I hope to keep keep pushing because there's so much to learn and it's it's so nice to see her little baby grow <laughs> the way she did and find purpose and you know I, I truly I think of her as an extension of myself at this point and I've cried with her and laughed with her and so much of it is all of it truly is just it's so honest it's it's i'm pulling from pieces of my life and i have a really deep connection with her i love her very much she's very close to my heart so it's been quite the journey but i can only can only hope to keep going yeah, well we've at least one more season of evolution for for rael so we're dying to see we're dying to see this this sort of hopefully next, more next phase hopefully more well we, we got, we'll come to that in a minute we'll come, i'm screaming i know right we're working we're, we're, we'll come back to that um have, were you surprised at the enthusiasm of the fans when the show premiered on social media? I mean, I think the Motherland Fort Salem fandom is super passionate. They're really engaged. You know, like, what did you think about the fan reception? Are there any, like, great fan interactions you've had that sort of, like, really moves you? Like, again, it's your first time going two seasons, right? So. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been, every day there's something that, that I see that moves me. And people mm -hmm. reaching out to me about even even personal matters like aside from the show and representation is just saying you know I have quite a big scar on my face and mm -hmm. it happened in the midst of of my up trajectory in my in my mm -hmm. career and it really put a dent in things but I kept pushing and I kept pushing for I kept advocating advocating for actors rights and um and knowing knowing what those are you know for very green actors like myself mm -hmm. um and people reaching out and just saying you know you really helped me love who I am and remember that this is a moment of, of my story and and it's something that 
crafted who I am today, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's strange how you can just touch complete strangers like that. It's, it's not something you think about going into your work, you know, it's just, you're just like, I want to create, it's, it's mm -hmm. my therapeutic outlet of, of creating and exploring and navigating these parts of myself that I didn't know existed. And, and in turn, you, you don't realize how many people you touch along the way. So it's, there's truly no words as to my thanks because I wouldn't be sitting in this chair talking to you and having this lovely conversation and I wouldn't be able to get to wake up and do what I love every day without without people showing so much true love and you know us it's so unconditional mm -hmm. and I honestly believe that if if I killed someone they'd have my back <laughs> like you know what you yeah. had a good reason we got you baby that's right that's right <laughs> Ready for you, you know. So it's like it, to have that kind of to have that kind of relationship with total strangers. It really, it really redeems my my belief in goodness in the world, and it's it's something that I was truly losing faith in at, mm -hmm. at the time that I jumped on this show. Uh. And yeah, it's 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 definitely saved me. I know I know a lot of people reach out and say the same thing, but it's it's such a mutual understanding and it's yeah it's truly safe that's awesome i mean and i, I want to say on behalf of the fandom i mean like what you've given us and the way y'all interact with the fandom has really mm -hmm. meant a lot and it's it's brought together all of these interesting communities like dj and i were complete strangers exactly. on the internet and mm -hmm. i but i watched the first episode i was like damn i gotta talk about this show with someone and so i tweeted <laughs> i was like does anybody <laughs> does anyone literally want to do a podcast with me and dj was the only one who replied and here we are I think 33 with, episodes yeah. and like 50 so hours later with, of content. With no podcast experience. The first yep. recording was literally just me with my headphones and it's come a very long way since then. Yep. So and like together. just you were saying, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's, I have to go back I'm, and listen to your early episodes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Probably I'm unpolished. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of it though. My gosh, that's See, it's stories like these that it's just like it, it blows my mind and it's such a great reminder. It's such a grounding reminder every day of just how fortunate I am that that so many people have such a common goal mm -hmm. and yeah, complete, mm -hmm. complete strangers just finding a, a mutual love and connection with each other. It, again, it's like it's it's kept my belief and hope alive and in the goodness of people. It definitely adds more beauty to the world, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to pivot a little bit and talk about some of the mechanics of, of how you film the show. Uh, I love the way magic looks on screen, right? Not, not just the special effects, but the body work you all do as a cast, mm -hmm. like with the hand gestures or the way you like physically project with your body. So could you tell me a little bit about sort of the physical elements of portraying spell casting? Like, is that something you all come up with as actors to say, like, I think this spell looks like this, or do you have like a professional spell casting, like coordinator who's like no no taylor you have to you have to just do with this hand not this hand or the spell doesn't work <laughs> more or less i mean very collaborative of course um of course elliot has this vision but he really gives us creative freedom he just we we sort of find the spot with our vocal coach of you know where it sits and what the range is and what it is that we're attempting to achieve in in our in terms of our work um and how that feels physically. So it kind of starts with something audible. So, you know, they, the studio will craft something that they think is appropriate for what the character's trying to achieve and, and what the tone feels like and if it's guttural or if it's gentle. Mm -hmm. And um, so once they've kind of come, come across a demo of that, they take it to us and we work with it and, and we find where, where we fit in that mix. Um, and then and then on top of that you you have performance so of course you know we we give our first i guess inclination of how how it feels to us physically mm -hmm. and connecting the sound with body um it, it's a lot of it's very spiritual and a lot of, it's, it's such a great question because mm -hmm. so much does go into this and it's yeah. not something i think that many of us think about yeah. but yeah so then we work with our vocal coach frederick and um we find a good stature, good movement with it, and uh, the musicality. And from there, we'll take it to the director and and to Elliot, and we get final approval, and we sort of all piece it out, work it out together, because so much of it depends on interacting with our environment as well. Mm -hmm.